If I were to ask y'all, if you were to get judged for something, you go on the court of law and you get judged for something, is that a good thing or a bad thing when that judgment come? Bad. Bad thing. You look at c crimes today, who gets the worst punishments? Oh, we do. We do. We can steal a candy bar, we go into jail. But somebody of another nation, they could rape a woman and get probation for like three months and say, hey, don't do that again. Don't do that again. But you, you just hungry. You stole a candy bar. Yes, it's wrong because God said thou shalt not steal, but we get a more harsher punishment. Those are the curses that's upon our people. That's why I said they have not, they have not known our, their ju God's judgments. Praise ye the Lord. Yes, sir. That's why God said they have not known our judgment. Praise ye the Lord. I want to show you our prophecy in the Bible. Y'all familiar with this, right? What's this right here? What's, what, what is this right here? This picture right here. Oh, look like a picture of a slave that was beat. Yup, this, this is a picture of a slave. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Now we're going to fast forward to 16, 19 and see what happens to our people. This is slave right here. They're, not, they're trying to take this out of the schools. They don't want to teach our children the truth. Because guess what's going to happen? You teach children about slavery and the prophets out here teaching, it's going to bring them back to this Bible. It's going to bring them back to their true nationality, true heritage. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. I'm going to make it quick. When you read Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2, it lets you know the word Egypt means bondage, means slavery. So God going to bring us back into slavery with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies Right here in Virginia, were we not sold to our enemies on auction blocks? Yes, we were. The gateway to slavery right here in Virginia. The reason God is going to do this because we broke his commandments. Right. He said, we don't hearken and do his commandments. This curse will come upon us. Read. For bond men and For slave men and bond women and slave women and no man shall buy you. That buy you means a whole Quaker turn. Nobody will be able to redeem you out of that. Nobody can help you out of that thing. So we're going to let the next brother step up and expound more on what we've been through. Men of Israel, sons of God. Next teacher. All right, Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. So y'all understand what the brother was bringing up concerning the real Jews? Give me uh, Psalms 14 and 1. Do y'all understand that? Who, who are the real Jews? Let me ask y'all that. Black people. Black people, right? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, right? Is that is that what you believe as well, sis? All right, so let me ask, what is your nationality? Um. I'll give you a hint. He just said it. Jew, you are a Jew. You are an Israelite. All right, so we out here to, to show our people, to wake the people up, let them know, hey, look, We've been lied to for a long time, right. for a long time, right? So remember what happened in, in history, like the brothers showed us this uh, image right here. This is our history. That's in the Bible, right? So that means we were broken as a people. We were broken, conditioned, renamed, and conquered, right? So before we were conquered, we were calling ourselves Judah, Benjamin, Levi, right? Israel. We understood that that was our nationality. But after we got conquered, they renamed us and called us black. Right? So we out here, right, do this through the spirit of the Lord to wake the people back up, to let them know not only are, is this Bible only for you, you are the real Jews and God requires something from you. Right. All right? So there's a point of us being in the land of America. Uh, give me a... X X five. I know I told you. Uh, Psalms fourteen. We we coming back to that. X five twenty two. Right. Um, um, righteous X. Right. X five eleven. That's five eleven. Uh, Judges five eleven. Excuse me. My fault. Judges five verse eleven. All right. We all here to wake the people up. Judges chapter five verse eleven. Read what you got. The book of Judges chapter five and verse eleven. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. So the scriptures say they that are delivered from the noise of archers. That word archers is just going into weapons. You know what that weapon is talking about? Let me let me uh 
let me try to make things a bit more plain. We're living in the last days, right? Remember in the time of Noah, what destroyed, what purged the earth? What, what was the, the main thing that purged the earth? Blood. The flood. All right, so God said it wouldn't happen like that again, but the next time would be by fire, right? So the noise of archers, that's talking about nuclear missiles. You understand? So it says they, meaning you Israelites, because this Bible is only for you, that are delivered or saved from those nuclear missiles, right? Read on. In the places of drawing water. In the places of drawing water. That's talking about our slavery. In the places of our slavery. Where was that for us today? That's talking about America. Because we served slavery over here. Right? In the places of drawing water. That's, talk, that's going into captivity. Read. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts. They shall, there shall they rehearse what? The righteous acts. The righteous acts. They shall be delivered if they perform the righteous acts. What is the righteous acts? Give me uh, Deuteronomy 625. What is the righteous acts that's going to save you or not save you? Right? Because when we read this Bible, we always think everything's positive. Everybody's going to be saved. John 3, 16. For God's the love of the world, right? Our mind always shifts to everything positive. But there's so much realness and raw truth in this Bible that we're not being taught in these Christian churches. So, what is that going into? Anybody know? Read it again. Last part. Oh, excuse me. Uh... Where you at? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. Remember, they shall be saved from, uh, for their righteous acts. They that are delivered, right? They that are saved by their righteous acts, right? Now we're, we're going into righteousness. What is righteousness according to the Bible? Read it again. And it shall be our righteousness. So this is righteousness according to God, right? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. You y'all understand that? You hear that, my brother? What's your name, bro? Brother Quail, my sister, what's your name? Shakia? Shakia Quail. What's your name, my brother? Zed? Larry. Brother Larry. All right. Shakia Quail Larry. All right. So righteousness. According to this verse, according to the Bible, according to God is keeping his commandments. So when we go back to Acts, excuse me, uh, Judges 5.11, where it says they that are, are delivered, right, based off of their righteous acts, that's going into them keeping God's commandments. So if you understand, to, to, to put some wisdom and understanding behind that thought, you're only going to be delivered if you are keeping God's commandments, Right? You're only going to be saved, right, from those arrows, like the scriptures say. And we, we just got the understanding that the arrows is going into the nuclear missiles that's prophesied to come to America. It's prophesied, so it's going to happen. You're only going to be delivered if you are keeping God's commandments. Right. You Israelites. Y'all understand that, right? So do y'all love God? Y'all trying to get delivered, right? So what is the, the smart thing to do according to the Bible? Live right, but what, go into detail a little bit. Huh? We just read it. Keep God's commandments. Keeping God's commandments, that's what's going to save you. Nothing else. Not going to church every Sunday. Right? Not, not praying to the Lord uh, every time you, you eat your pork. Right? Because Christ said we're not supposed to consume swine. Did y'all know that? Y'all eat pork at all? Anybody out here? Come on, sis. You don't eat no pork? No, no pepperoni or nothing, huh? No, once you educate yourself. Okay, all right. Hey, look. I'll take your word for it. All praises. Keep not eating pork. Let's get that. You got it? The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hook. So this is talking about the pig. God is talking about consuming pork consuming the pig right 
and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. God says the pig is unclean to us for consumption. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Shall ye not what? Not eat. So we are not supposed to eat pork according to God. So that is a commandment. Remember what we just got. The only people that are going to be delivered are those that keep God's commandments. So if you eat pork, you're not going to be delivered. You understand? But that's only one commandment. That's a commandment you have to align yourself with, right? In order to get that much uh, better with, with the Most High God in Christ. To be more in their spirit. Because when Christ was roaming the earth, guess what? He did not eat pork neither. Right? And if the Father was here, right, the Most High God, he would not eat pork neither. You understand? So we, the Israelites, the chosen people of God, are to align ourselves with what the Father would do and what Christ would do. That's one commandment. All right, let's get some more. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. All right, let's get some more commandments. Let's get more on what it's going to take for us to get the kingdom of heaven or delivered, like the scriptures say. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So this is another commandment. He says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. What is that going into? Anybody? Like Brother Quill? Hold, hold on. Like, like what? Like pants. Right? So that pants is what pertains to a man. God says, I created dresses for my Israelite princesses. That's who you are to the father, sis. Right? You are his child. You are a female, therefore you are the, the, the princess version of royalty. The, the, the sons, they're the kings, they're the princes, right? So as a princess, you are commanded to always wear a dress. God doesn't want to see you in any form of masculinity. So when you put the pants on, there's a spirit behind that, right? That's why a lot of our sisters, a lot of women, uh, women period today, they put on uh, pants and they start to act more masculine, right? They, they start to have more traits like a man. And our sisters, they don't really realize what they're doing. You're making yourself way more un unattractive and unavailable to an to a alpha male, to a leader, right? You don't want just any old guy out here guiding your house, right? Who's the head of the household? The man or the woman? According to God. Who's the head? Give me that head. The man, right? The man is the head of the household, right? So when you, when you put pants on, you're taken away from your femininity, right? You're, you're putting more uh, on a, uh, of a spirit of a man, right? And, and every time that happens, you know, you'll, you'll find yourself arguing more with a man, right? Having that contention. Right? And and you're you're less attractive in that way. But let's see who God says the head of the house is. Go ahead, read. The book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse three. Uh -huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So you will write, my sister. So the, the head of every household is the man. Alright? So the, the hierarchy is God the Father, Christ, man, women, children. All right? So that's, that's the divine order. All right? So you are commanded not to uh, wear pants as a woman. But go back to that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. There's also a commandment for the man as well. Let's read it. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. All right? So this is a commandment for the man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read on. For all that do so are abomination. Oh, hold, hold on. What does that mean? Abomination. Anybody? What's your name, bro? Me. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood? Hollywood? Brother Hollywood, Larry, Chiquita. Okay. All right. So what is uh, abomination according to the scriptures? Do you know? Hollywood? Larry? Do you know? Huh? Distress. Distress? Distress. 
oh disgrace yeah something like that right something extremely uh disgusting right so god is saying when a man puts on a dress to him to the perfect being right to the perfect being that changed not that is disgusting when a man puts on a dress but it's also disgusting to god when a woman puts on pants or shorts right something that pertains to a man all right now remember what happened in history we were broken as a people so we're living in a modern day age to where you know that's normal for us give me uh isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 right that's normal for us you know, we, we walk outside of our houses, we go to work, we go to school, we see women in pants everywhere. So we, we start to internalize, okay, that's, that's okay. That's fine. We see women wearing pants in the churches. That must be okay, right? It's because they're not reading the Bible in the churches. They're just going over sermons. They're singing songs all day. They're not keeping God's commandments, and they're not reading precept upon precept. Right. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. You hear that? The Bible says, God says, woe or destruction to them that call good evil or evil good. All right, so what is good according to the scriptures? Keeping God's commandments. You can read about that in Romans chapter 7. Being any any time you're you're good according to God according to the Bible that is keeping God's commandments right. right so it says destruction or death to those that do what woe unto them that call evil good and good evil so a, a woman wearing pants that's never a good thing a man wearing a dress is never a good thing uh, us eating pork is never a good thing so when they put it, all up in these commercials right uh having these sizzling pork pork chops and things like that showing you these pizzas with pepperoni god hates it to us we we look at those uh those ads or those commercials and we think dang that look good i'm, I'm about to go get me a pepperoni pizza after seeing that but god god hates it the whole time and he's coming back to destroy everyone that think that's a good thing Right, so the Christian church, they tell us, it's okay to eat pork. Right, we're under the new, cov uh, new covenant. Right, God done away with all of that. That's what we're taught in the churches. Give me uh, Matthew chapter 5. That's what we're taught. And we start to believe those things because we see very few people actually teaching the Bible. And what it says to do. To be delivered. Right, but let's see if that's a, a true thought. Right, the laws are done away, but let's see if that's what Christ said. Right. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Huh? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So this is Christ speaking right here. Christ says, don't you dare think that I, the, the reason why I'm here today is because you're able to sin now. Don't think me being here means that it's okay for you to commit adultery. It's okay for you to eat pork. It's okay for your women to dress like men, men to dress like women, homosexuality, all these different sins that a lot of the majority of our people pleasure in. Christ said, don't, don't think that foolish thought that me being here allows you to do those things. Read on. Or the prophet. Or the prophecies in the Bible. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christ said he came to fulfill, right? He came to fulfill the sacrificial law. Right. So what is the example of that? He got crucified on the cross, right? So he fulfilled animal sacrifice, right? That's the understanding that the so-called Christians don't have. So they, they teach to, to go against the commandments of God. They teach that all you have to do is just, you know, go to church on Sunday, pay your tithes. You know, pray to God that he'll forgive you for, you know, not paying your tithes on Sunday, right? You're not even supposed to go to church or congregate on that day. That is not the seventh day of the week. But that's what the Christian church uh, teaches, right? It's totally in opposition to God's spirit. So what is going to save you, my sister? What's going to save you? 
doing the commandments. That's right. Right. You you putting on a dress. That's what's going to save you. Right. You'll, you'll see a whole lot of other women not doing that. But when that time comes, when uh, the times of refreshing, when Christ returns and he's ready to purge the earth, just like in the time of Noah, if, if you're putting on a dress, if you got these fringes on, right, because this is another commandment for us Israelites. It's another commandment. If, you, if your apparel is right and everything else according to God's spirit is right, guess what? You're going to be one of those redeemed out of all the multitude that die a horrible death. That's right. That die a horrible death, sis. Right? And the same thing with the brothers. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. family.